Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up, my name is Glenn and today we have a video for you looking at some of the games about to be added to the Nintendo Switch Online service for both the NES and the Super Nintendo. Now when the 20 games were added for the Super Nintendo back in September, it looked as if the service was finally up and running, but we've had quite a wait since then, although as of the 12th of December, there will be 6 games added to the service, 4 for the Super Nintendo and 2 for the NES. So we're going to have a look at those games and see what they're all about. Now we're looking at the six games that were announced for the Western Territories, as Japan had a couple of games that were different to everybody else, they had Famicom Wars and Route 16 Turbo, so we're not looking at those, we're just looking at the six that have been released elsewhere, so here they are. Starting with the Super Nintendo games then, the first one we're going to look at is Super Punch-Out. This is a sequel to Punch-Out on the NES, although it actually has more in common with its arcade siblings, the first of which is also available on the Switch via the Hamster Arcade Archives series. You play from the perspective of Behind the Boxer, which if memory serves me right, is not Little Mac this time. The boxer's body is portrayed in translucent form, similar to the green wireframe models of the arcade games as opposed to the higher camera angle of the NES game that showed the entirety of each boxer. You must take on your opponents with a combination of jabs and hooks whilst learning their attack patterns which become more flamboyant as you rise up the ranks. I remember getting this game for the Super Nintendo for £5 brand new many years ago now and still have that mint box copy to this day. Breath of Fire 2 joins its predecessor which is already on the Nintendo Switch Online service and comes from Capcom. This is a turn based RPG which takes place 500 years after the story of the original and I remember saying in my video on the first batch of Super Nintendo games released, a link to which will be in the top pinned comment, that I would bet that this would be one of the next games to release and here we are. Kirby's Superstar, or Kirby's Fun Pack as it was known over here in the UK, is a collection of 8 short Kirby games. My favourite of these is Spring Breeze which is a 16-bit remake of sorts of the original Game Boy game Kirby's Dream Land. It makes some changes to the original and it's not very long but it's enjoyable nonetheless. The other games included are Gourmet Race, The Great Cave Offensive, Revenge of Meta Knight, Milky Way Wishes and The Arena. There are also two sub or mini games included called Samurai Kirby and Megaton Punch. There's a lot to like about this collection, personally I prefer it over Kirby's Dream Land 3 which was one of the first batch of SNES games on the Nintendo Switch Online. It's another one that I have the original cartridge for so it does hold quite a bit of nostalgia for me. The final Super Nintendo game then, and quite the surprise it must be said, is Star Fox 2. Now Star Fox 2 was a sequel to Star Fox or Star Wing and was co-developed by Nintendo and Argonaut Software as was the first game. It again made use of Argonaut's Super FX chip and was due to release in late 1995. However, it's reported that Nintendo became concerned that the game's 16-bit 3D visuals would compare quite poorly to games that were beginning to release on their rival's 32-bit consoles, specifically the Sony PlayStation, and Nintendo cancelled the project despite it being fully completed. 
Gameplay wise, this sequel deviates a little from its predecessor, with you now moving your ships around a map screen. Should you make contact with an enemy on this screen, you are taken to a behind the R-Wing perspective, much like the original, where you must engage in battle. You have to defeat the enemies whilst preventing Planet Corneria's damage level reaching 100%. A lot of the game's ideas were reused in later Star Fox games, and the only other official way to play this other than on Nintendo Switch Online is by acquiring a Super Nintendo Mini System. I'm actually very surprised to see this one become available on this service, as I thought Nintendo would keep it exclusive to that SNES Mini, but it's great to have it available to a whole new audience. As well as those four Super Nintendo games then, there are also two NES games added as well, the first of which is Crystalis. Crystalis is an RPG which was developed by SNK and released on the NES in 1990 in North America, as well as in Japan where it was called God Slayer. It tells the story of a post-apocalyptic 2097, 100 years after October the 1st 1997, when the end of the world as we know it occurred. Wasn't 97 Judgment Day in Terminator 2 as well? Seems like that was a bad year for humanity all round. Anyway, you are awakened as humanity's last hope. Fairly standard stuff story-wise, but it's a great game nonetheless. This is actually already available on the Switch as part of the SNK 40th Anniversary Collection, which was the first time I had a chance to play it, and it holds up very well. It's great to see such classic third-party games added to the service, and the final game is just such a thing too. Journey to Cilius also came out in 1990 for the NES for all regions although it was known as Rough World in Japan. It is a run and gun where you play as Jay McRae as he attempts to defeat terrorists on a space colony in the Cilius solar system. Interestingly, having mentioned Terminator just now, this game actually began life as a licensed game for the first Terminator movie, however the rights were lost during production and the storyline and character sprites were changed accordingly. I've also heard that the main character sprite looks different across regions, with him wearing futuristic armour in the Japanese and European versions and missing this particular feature in the American version. It will be interesting to see which version each region gets this time around. So there you have it then, six new games for the service. I'd be interested to know what people do make of the service so far. I know it's a bit of a slow burner with these games, but I must say I am at least happy to see that some of the games being released are ones that we haven't had available on virtual consoles of the past. Please do let me know your thoughts on this matter down below, and which of these games are you most excited to play? A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.